Hey there, Bulldog fans, and welcome into the Bulldog Blitz. I'm your host, Mark Minner. Coming up on this week's show, the men's soccer team will host the Horizon League Championship. The football team is gearing up for the season finale, and women's volleyball dropped a couple of tough matches at home. But first, the second and final exhibition game for the men's basketball team is in the books, and now the dogs are ready to open the season on Saturday against Marion. Last Thursday, it was a matchup with Division III Hanover College. It wasn't really much of a contest with the Bulldogs going on a 21-5 run to start the game. And after building up the lead, Butler was able to experiment with the lineups. Matt Howard was the only player on the roster to play over 20 minutes and finished with a double-double of 12 points and 10 rebounds. Shelvin Mack scored a game-high 13 points on 5 of 14 shooting. Everybody got in for Butler, and all but two members on the team played at least 10 minutes including freshman Kyle Marshall, who came off the bench and scored 11 points in his second game with a Bulldog uniform. After the victory, the team talked about the performance over Hanover. I was pleased with our energy and our focus. I thought it was pretty good for the most part all the way through. We played a lot of different combinations, and I didn't think it waned a whole lot with those different combinations in. And so for the most part, we've got some things that obviously we can work on and get better, but a lot of guys got a lot of minutes, a lot of experience, a lot of film to teach from, and it's kind of the goal of exhibition games. The Horizon League Men's Soccer Championships will be held in Indianapolis this weekend at the Butler Bowl. The Bulldogs received the honor after a tremendous regular season that left them with a league record of 7-0-1 and a regular season title. That one draw came in a rare 10 a.m. game this past Friday against Cleveland State. It was just the second time this season that the team tied an opponent, and they still remain just one of two unbeaten teams in Division I. As the statistics would indicate, Butler had plenty of chances to score, including a shots advantage of 21 to 8 and a shots on goal advantage of 7 over 2. Both Butler and Cleveland State were unable to score in the match despite both teams having a shot in overtime. With the draw, the Bulldogs became the second team in the history of the Horizon League to finish with an unbeaten record in league play. It's also the first time in school history that the soccer team finished without a loss. The Bulldogs are ranked sixth in the nation and regardless of the outcome of the Horizon League tournament are expected to receive an at-large bid to the NCAA tournament. The matchup this week against Drake will be the last of the season for the Butler football team. This past Saturday was the home finale against Jacksonville, who was the top offensive team in the NCAA Division I FCS and averages 45.4 points per game. Butler held the Dolphins to over 20 points less than the season average, but was unable to hold off a late charge in the fourth quarter to pick up their sixth loss of the season. Butler led until there were four minutes left in the fourth quarter, and that's when Jacksonville scored back-to-back -back unanswered touchdowns and remained undefeated in Pioneer League play. Andrew Huck was 28 for 48, passing for 248 yards. However, it was the two interceptions in the fourth quarter that led the Jacksonville scores. Butler's defense was able to hold the Dolphins to just 341 total yards and only 78 yards of rushing. The women's volleyball team will not be hosting the Horizon League tournament this weekend. Instead, it will be played in Milwaukee. This was determined after the Bulldogs dropped a pair of matches to Green Bay and Milwaukee on Friday and Saturday. After a four-set loss to sixth-place Green Bay on Friday, the second-place Bulldogs welcomed the Horizon League leading Milwaukee Panthers into Hinkle on Saturday. The Bulldogs took the first set but fell in the next three, and it was a sour turn of events for Butler, who was led by Jessica Wolf, with a match high 19 kills and 12 digs. The Bulldogs will round out the regular season this weekend with a pair of matches against Youngstown State and Cleveland State. Coming up next, we'll catch up with Lance Rinker of the Butler Collegian. Stay with us on the Bulldog Blitz. Hey there, welcome back on to the Bulldog Blitz, joined by Lance Rinker, our weekly conversation with Lance. We thank you for joining us once again, Butler Collegiate Sports Writer. Yeah, thanks for having me. Well, let's talk first about Butler basketball. We're getting close to the first game. Mm -hmm. Now, it's almost up against Marion. The last of the two exhibition games against Hanover was played this past Thursday. Uh, I mean, you never expect an exhibition game to be very serious, but, yeah. uh, you know, what, what were your thoughts of it? Uh, well, we went 180 to 41, so a huge point difference. Um, we went in looking to improve defensively after allowing mm -hmm. 70 points to Florida Southern that we really wanted to shore up on that side of the ball, and we did. We limited uh, Hanover to, I think, 30% shooting, 25% in the first half, so that was impressive. Um, a lot of guys off the bench got playing time. Again, all 14 guys played. Um, they did that in both exhibition games. Everybody saw minutes, so from an experience standpoint, everyone was getting minutes, and looking good on that aspect. Uh, 
Shelvin Mack led the team with 13 points scoring. Matt Howard added a double-double. Mm -hmm. So they were pretty impressive. You talk about you get to see a lot of different lineups there. The starting lineup had changed a little bit mm -hmm. too. And you see a lot of different rotations. And you know Coach Stevens like to do that. You like to see who can play well with, with the other players around the court. As you look at the starting line, that's a big question. What's it going to be come that game against Marion? What are you thinking? Uh, well, the difference on uh, versus Hanover, Garrett Butcher started in place of Andrew Smith. And I think Butcher and Smith are kind of battling for that four spot uh, behind Matt Howard, uh, the other big guy on the team. And uh, Smith actually, when he was in the game, got into some early foul trouble, picked up three fouls in the first half. So Butcher saw a lot of minutes. Uh, he played pretty well, only had four points, but uh, he's more of a role player anyway. Um, I don't think I think you might see those guys you know interchange throughout the year. Uh, I don't think you'll see any big lineup differences in terms of the guard spots. Nord and Van Zant have that uh, right. down pretty well, and Howard is going to be the starting center. So uh, I think Stevens is just playing around with uh, the three and the four spots and seeing who fits best in the lineup. Now, so. two years ago, you would have asked and you would have said Matt Howard, a clear leader on this team. Last year, Gordon Hayward really stepped up for this team. And this year, there's a lot of different people to choose from. Shelvin Mack, obviously coming off a great summer. You got Matt Howard in the senior season, looking trim, lost a lot of weight, and now he looks cut, ready to go. Uh, who do you think is going to be the leader for this team? Well, right now, there's really no clear favorite as yeah. to who's going to be the leader in terms of scoring. Um, I think they're just going to play the matchups. They've been going to Howard a lot in these two exhibitions because of his height advantage. Uh, but Mack is a true scorer. Um, we've seen that you know, his whole career at Butler. Norred is picking up offensively, and Van Zant on the defensive side is very important, but I think he'll also offer something on offense. So it's hard to say you know, who's yeah. going to be the clear front runner uh, in terms of team leader. But uh, yeah, they have some good role players, and the guys really feed well off of each other. So. Now, Marion was an exhibition opponent just a couple of years ago, and, and now they're the home opener. So this shouldn't be an extremely competitive game if you look at the teams. Uh, what are you looking for, though? Uh, Marion's a team that's very strong at the guard position. They yeah. return their top three scorers from last season who are all guards. Um, and really, I don't, I mean, it shouldn't really be <laughs> much of a game. Uh, they don't offer a lot in terms of a big guy. They have a yeah. sophomore from right around the Indy area who's 6'11", but Matt Howard with his experience mm -hmm. and he should be able to handle him very well. But uh, yeah, we'll see, uh, you know, could be a close game, but as you mentioned, they weren't even, uh, Maybe on the regular season schedule last couple years ago. So. This could be, but probably probably won't be. Yeah. That would be the guess. Men's soccer, uh, you can't say enough about this season. Ranked sixth in the country. They ended up dr going to a draw with Cleveland State that was just the second year. Still haven't been beaten, and now they're going to be hosting this Horizon League championship. Mm -hmm. The Cleveland State game was interesting. Uh, nothing really surprising. The IUPUI draw was pretty shocking, but yeah. Cleveland State just a week ago beat Akron, mm -hmm. who was number one in the nation at the time. So we knew Cleveland State would be a good team going in, a tough opponent. Uh, but in terms of hosting the tournament, I think we are the fr favorite in the Horizon League. We still haven't dropped a game. Um, and I think the home field advantage will really pay off for us. Uh, women's soccer, a different story. They did not have the outcome they were looking for. Mm -hmm. Got a great seed in the championship, able to host it. But then come Milwaukee, it's a 5-0 loss right on their home turf. Yeah, it was the second time this year they played Milwaukee. Uh, went to Wisconsin and escaped with a 1-0 victory. Uh, so that was huge. And that win let them host the tournament. They actually shared the season mm -hmm. uh, conference title with Milwaukee. But uh, Sarah Hagen had two goals versus us, three goals total in the tournament. She's regarded as one of the best players in the nation, really. And she was the tournament MVP, Horizon League Player of the Year. And a player like that, it's tough to stop and contain her. But it wasn't too surprising that we lost the game. But the margin of victory was the most shocking. All right. Well, thank you very much for joining us this week, Lance. We appreciate it. Thanks. All right. That'll do it with our conversation with Lance Rinker, Butler, Butler Collegiate Sports Writer. We'll be back with more of the Bulldog Blitz, including what you can see on campus this weekend. This weekend, the men's soccer team will host the Horizon League Championships at the Butler Bowl. Those games will take place on Friday with the semifinals, and then the championship will be played on Sunday. On Friday night, the women's volleyball team will take on Youngstown State at 7 p.m. inside Hinkle Fieldhouse. Then on Saturday, the men's basketball team will open up non-conference play against Marion at 2 p.m. 30 minutes after the men's game concludes, the women's volleyball team will host Cleveland State for the regular season finale and senior day. Well, that will just about do it for this week's episode of the Bulldog Blitz. Make sure to catch us on Comcast On Demand or online at youtube.com backslash Bulldog Blitz Sports. Until then, I'm Mark Minner. We'll see you right back here on the Bulldog Blitz.